So first things first, Billy, how are you? I'm good, actually. I'm really, really good. I feel I've quit smoking a week ago okay. and I've never been so healthy in my life. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's how much it does, yeah. That's great. <laughs> that's great. But what made you decide to kind of that it was time? Well, I've been slowly quitting everything else. I, I used to do a lot of drugs, basically. I used to be heavily addicted to cocaine, and okay. and I and I quit about nine months ago. Um, and then I kind of and I managed to. I sort of stopped drinking. Well, I mean, I drink a little bit now, but I almost. I feel like I've quit getting drunk now, mm. and I sort of enjoy. I, I've learned. I, I stopped drinking for about four or five months, and then because I was almost scared that I would fall back into my old because. Drinking is the gateway, really. Right. Drinking has always been the gateway to everything else. And then smoking was just that last thing that was just kind of just lingering around. I was like, why is he still here? <laughs> you know, it's sinister like that, isn't it? Because it doesn't, it doesn't seem important enough to give up. You know, it doesn't seem to like ruin your life that much compared to like class A drugs. <laughs> so sure. Well, th this is maybe counterintuitive, but I always thought of it like this, that I I'm not a smoker. And the only reason why is if, if I were to smoke, then there better be drugs in it or something yeah. to make it worthwhile in a way, right? What's the point? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the problem with it. It doesn't do anything. So exactly. you know what? I, I, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd have, a, I always, ha always have the morning cigarette. That was the, that was the hardest one to kick, actually. And as soon as I had a fag, I'd just feel really tired and just be like, oh, and all the things that I wanted to do in a day are just like out the window now. Whereas this week from not smoking, it's like I still have the energy I had when I woke up, which mm. is really odd. You know, kind of still waiting for that point when it goes off. You know, but it doesn't well right. it's interesting because you mentioned the kind of uh, nine months ago you kind of made this decision to to change and become a little bit more healthy was there a worry about creativity <sighs> yeah there was a worry yeah that's a really interesting thing because almost all of my songs and all of the songs on the reflection ep were written while i was you know either on drugs or mm. on a come down or something you know and I did tend to write a lot about dark, deep things because my life was in a bit of a mess, really. Um, and I guess there is that worry of kind of, oh, no, if my life gets better, maybe my songs will be boring. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think, I think I've realised now with the album, is it is a little bit more hopeful and a little bit more fun. Mm. But I don't think it, I've realised that it doesn't have to be sad to be cool. Sure, you know? sure sort of like deep it can still be a great song it's it's about the melody so yeah I don't I, I don't think it has changed but I yes I am aware and I'm slightly scared of that happening <laughs> yeah well, well we'll see what happens in the future but let's focus on uh, this record then first and before we talk about the album I'd like to jump back to the beginning a little bit because I came across an interview where you talked about the first album that you ever made and I believe it was uh with your uh, father at that point when you were around 14. What made you want to, what was the passion at that time? What, what made you want to do that? Wow, that's, that's amazing. Uh, I've never really been asked this. Um, it was really just a bonding thing for me and okay. my dad because we just, you know, we, my dad was an artist and, but like a, a painter. So like all sure. of these people are his and, you know the whole place is just surrounded by his work um and so he spent a lot of time inside in the house so he didn't necessarily like have a nine to five he didn't go out so it was just sort of me and my dad in in, okay. in the house all day just hanging out and, and my mum left when I was eight I mean you know I still see her regularly she's great sure. um <laughs> but it was very much me and my dad was was everything and uh, I'm an only child so we were kind of bored a lot of the okay. time and, and just thought why don't we try and I could play piano um I just thought I'd always been able to play piano I don't know why even when I was like I think the first time I ever played the piano I I played it the same way I do now it's just something that I I still don't really know why everyone thinks it's special to, to be able to play but anyway um so so then so I would just sort of create things and my dad would just record it and we had this like Windows 95 computer with uh with Cubase <laughs> on the first day of Cubase is on and uh and it sounded bad I've got to admit that like it sounded it was a mess all of it was a mess 
<laughs> but we were just trying. We had no idea what we were doing. We just just had fun with it. I think that's the way it should be, really. Sure. In a way, I'm doing the, I'm doing the same thing now, even with a studio, <laughs> just having fun well, with it. I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to ask, because I, I don't know if you have a recording, uh, that I suppose you do, of, of that uh, first <laughs> album. And I, I don't know when the last time was that you listened to it, but could you kind of hear what you were trying to do? And even though the skills and then kind of the, because you've uh, gotten into production in the last couple of years as well, the skills weren't there yet. But could you yeah. kind of hear what you were trying to do? I think we could, yes. Uh, with the piano stuff, it was kind of like, let's just put a mic up and see if it sounds good there. No, it doesn't. Okay, let's put it somewhere else. It was That was the kind of mm. the plan of it. When it when it came to, when I got a band, we started trying to record the band and that was when it was a real mess. But at the same time, you could, I could understand certain bits of logic, like we would put the drum kit on, like a sort of foam stage. So the drummer would be bouncing around on all this foam as he was playing, it was terrible. It, and it did absolutely nothing. <laughs> but, but we thought that that was soundproofing. I guess we sort of had the right idea with foam, but but it just didn't need to be on the floor. <laughs> it didn't need to be, it didn't need to be on the walls. So right. get it. <laughs> at, at the, you mentioned the band and at age 15-ish. Um, was this around the time that you started singing? Yeah. Yeah, it was mainly because we, I, I started this band. My dad was really encouraging of me, of me okay. getting it back. So I wanted to do music and I just didn't really know how to because I, I can't read it. I can't read music and I wasn't allowed into any of the like lessons. I wasn't allowed to do it at school because mm. you, had to have, you had to have grade three theory or above mm. to, to even study it. Okay. So that was, that was out of the window. And and then, so my dad was like, get a band. And so I was like, well, I don't really have any mates. So I needed to, so that, that sort of killed two birds with one stone, really, because it go, gave me some friends and a band. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I did that. And we didn't have a singer. You know, I was playing the keyboards at the back. And everyone, and we, we spent months trying to find the singer and just no one was, just no one. I think there were a few people, but they were kind of terrible or non-existent, didn't want to mm. do it. And then I was filling in. And then it was turned out that I ended up doing it forever. <laughs> but in that sense, then, were you kind of uh, a natural at it then? Uh, or did you kind of know you had a good voice or was it, has it been a kind of a big work in progress to, to get the voice where you are today? Uh, not really, actually. Mm. Um, oh, God, I sound so arrogant here. No, but, but the, the, the I, sound... really I don't mean it to be arrogant. I just, mm -hmm. it wasn't hard. And I'm just telling the truth, it wasn't hard. And I was like, I kept thinking, because I remember singing the first time and and everyone was like, oh, wow, let's bang on in tune. And I was thinking, well, why would it not be in tune? Why would you want to sing out of tune? It didn't make any sense to me. Like, why would, why would, that's the, surely that's the, it's the fundamental. It's like, wow, you just swallowed when you ate that piece of bread. That's amazing. It's like, well, I'm not just going to leave it. Do you know what I mean? It's so, so right. it obvious to me. Um, but then it was kind of, you know, I'm not saying, oh, I could sing great at the beginning, but I d it never, the tuning part, the pitch and the tone mm. and the breath, that all came really easily. The bits that were tricky was like delivery, pronunciation, working out whether, like, what the what the right, the best way to say this word is or sing this word, that mm. all of those all the delivery and stuff that that took a long time and the accent thing as well like I had a thick Northamptonian accent when I sang at first and I wouldn't really yeah pronounce my words when I was okay. a kid it was it was more sounds than than words sometimes <laughs> and the songwriting element then when did that become a factor when did uh, kind of getting thoughts out to paper and then being able to express them either to an audience or, or just by yourself when did that become a role Perfect. Well, that became a role that pretty much as soon as I worked out I could sing, I okay. sort of went back to my dad and I was like, Dad, I can sing now. And he was like, OK, <laughs> let's write. So we were just, it's weird because I didn't realise what we were doing was writing sessions because mm. my dad wasn't in music either. So he didn't really know what, what we were doing, but we would sit in the cellar, which, you know, is actually the same cellar that I I make everything in now. Um, okay. And uh we would just sit down there. It used to be a bar. My dad made it into a bar back then, but it was kind of like a jam room, fun, like bar mm. thing, party room. And, and yeah, we'd just sort of write 
terrible songs put together and come up with rhymes and you know we we really had no idea uh but to be fair they weren't too bad i think some of them i can still remember you know they were catchy and i, I remember we would always focus on them being uh, catchy and fun and not too complicated i think as i've got older i've almost sometimes overcomplicate things a bit too much mm. you know but back then it was there was no rules and especially with kind of uh, you've released a, a bunch of eps and, and you've played music uh, for a while now what has that being able to express yourself in that way what has that done for you well i mean it's therapy really and and i don't i don't realize how much therapy it is until i'm not doing it and mm -hmm. you know there was there was times when i was at my girlfriend's house for quite a long time and there, there was no instruments there and uh and after if i was staying there for like a couple of weeks i start to feel like why am i getting in a bad mood <laughs> like it's because i haven't played piano or, or done something musical for or if sometimes if i'm you know doing too much promo and and it sometimes feels like the job is all about you know TikTok followers <laughs> and you know all this sort of rubbish basically and it, it right. kind of makes me bit depressed sometimes and then I realize and then as soon as I I get into a new song like right now I'm working on a new song that I I started a few days ago and it's really coming together now and I'm, I'm thinking I'm excited by it and so I'm happy and I'm in a really good mood and I, and I think I'll have a really good couple of weeks working on it but the sad thing is that I know that when it comes to an end I'll, I'll have to sort of <laughs> wait until the next one pops along you know it, it, so, yeah, it, it's, it, it's all about It's probably the healthiest thing for my mind that I have, that and tennis. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, being, being physically active is also important, of course. Yeah. Um, was it difficult then when uh, kind of this whole pandemic stuff started and, and a certain element of that was kind of being cut off for, from you? Yeah, I mean, the live side of things has been cut off. Uh, Although I'm actually going back on tour in May, which I, I can't oh, believe, yeah. can't believe it's happening so soon. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, it was it was tough. I, I've got to admit, I don't know. For me, I feel very lucky because I just got to a point where I'd established a bit of a name. I have my fans, and I've got my streams on Spotify. I'm lucky enough to be at because I'm unsigned. I I can I sort of own my masters, so I can afford to to do this as a job you know and so and I'd already I just built a studio as well in the cellar and so I was and I had no idea how to even use the studio I'd kind of just <laughs> gone all in with it you know I was like bought the laptop and all the equipment and it was just sort of sitting there <laughs> staring at me going are you going to learn me one day and like I was thinking well I've been on tour for five years pretty much non-stop before that and And this lockdown kind of forced me to kind of go, okay, well, I'm not going to go on tour now for a year. I guess I better learn how to do this production thing now that I've got all the stuff. <laughs> right. So, so for me, it was great. I just, I, I've sat in the cellar and I've made, you know, this Reflections EP and a classical album, technically two top tens in a lockdown, which are pretty, under the circumstances. Not too bad, of... not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I just just quick, uh, quickly want to touch upon Together at Home, which was uh, the instrumental cl classical album or piano yeah. album. Um, what if, having made that album, what if that did you take to reflections or did it kind of, because I, I often hear that albums are kind of a reaction to, to the things that have come before. So, so how has that uh, Together at Home affected reflections in, in kind of the direction of it? The interesting thing is that I almost feel a bit like Together at Home was was almost after Reflections because because mm. Reflections is it, it, sort of clues in the name, I guess, in a way. Now I've just said that, I realised. <laughs> um, but it's it was it was kind of like most of these songs were written, you know, two three years ago um, when I was signed. You know, I was signed to Warner Music, um, and you know what? They were great, but. They just didn't really know what to do, and neither did I. And and I think I was very lost in my sound, and you know it didn't. It just wasn't working for, for various reasons. 
and a lot of those songs just ended up just not getting released and, and I kind of I'm just so glad and grateful that they they just gave me it all back really mm. when we passed away so they just gave me it back um and we just called it quits and and so I've been sitting on these songs and I've wanted to release them for such a long time and and I, you know when I was signed to them I wrote about God, two, three hundred songs. Like literally, I was in a writing session every day okay. with someone. Else. You know, I put I put the work in, and and I was just thinking, God, am I creating just a graveyard of songs here that are never going to get released? We, essentially, I guess most artists have that that SoundCloud link sure. that's got everything they've done on that only their manager and them have ever heard. But um, so it's just nice to actually finally get these songs out. So Together at Home really was more of a nod to the old stuff that me and my dad used to do, the classical side. Okay. That was the closest thing for that. And it was also a bit of fun, really. Together at Home, I never, I never really expected it to do anything. I just, I was, if anything, I was just sort of learning how to produce mm. at that point. And this was a way of me just sort of honing in on those skills. And, and those songs that are on Reflections, then, so, so they, are, they, have, they were written uh, a couple of years ago? Well, I mean, Silence was actually written when I, when I, well, it was written eight years ago. Okay. Um, with one of my mates, yeah, in the cellar. Um, and, and then some of them, I mean, talk, yeah, all, almost all of them were written about a year and a half ago. The only one that wasn't was Wasting Time. That was written quite recently. Um, but I, I produced all the tracks. Well, I produced about 80% of the EP uh very recently so I kind of felt like I gave it a new bit of life with it you know that now that I can make the tracks myself it really it feels like they're new every time I release something it feels brand new even if right. I wrote it ages ago because and when I say I wrote it ages ago I'm tweaking it all the time now that I can produce you know that's the great thing you can just you know you just go down there you like try a bit of piano Three or four weeks later, that doesn't work. All right, take that out. It's like a lot more like patience with it. You know, right. it's not like going to the studio. You've got to make a hit in a day. That was basically what it was like when I was signed. It was like you need one. You've got like two days in this amazing studio. We spent thousands of pounds on, <laughs> and if we don't get a hit, you dropped. Basically, <laughs> yeah. that doesn't sound sound like the greatest environment for for kind <laughs> of artistic expression. But <laughs> that's just my opinion. Um, but. <laughs> the reason why I asked when these songs were written is they do feel like they all fit together quite well and uh, thematically and, and sonically as well. Uh, so did you kind of select them based on what you, you what you are talking about in the songs? I think there is an element of that. However, I think, you know, a, a good 50% of those two, 300 songs were in that world. And, okay. and are in that sound okay. you know it, it was kind of I mean yeah there's there's like there's all these different groups I try and group them together because there's so many that I go mm -hmm. okay well maybe there's an album there and there's an album over there maybe that, that'll be my album when I'm like 60 and I've run out of ideas <laughs> <laughs> so I guess so but in, a lot of it is down to production as well if you're making the record all together you know even though I wrote some of the songs eight years ago and some of the songs three years ago When it came to actually making the EP, that took me about three or four months of just solely working on those six tracks, just coming in and out of them. So naturally they have a similar feel because, you know, I used the same kick sounds for three of the songs. I used the same rise as a similar synths in a few of the tracks. Almost all of the tracks have got very similar vocal chains um, and similar compressors and, and just things like that just help make everything tie in you know and i like mm -hmm. to sort of and it sometimes i think oh god is that because i'm being lazy but it was really because i wanted to have this this spine feel through it i think with the album i'm actually going to do it differently i almost want the album to actually sound like every song i want it to be a diff almost sound like it's from a different artist right just because i'm bored I, li <laughs> i like the idea of t pushing myself and going okay how about every song on this album just sounds totally different And maybe that's the, th the theme that there is no theme. You know, it's probably suicide. My manager is terrified about it, but you know. I'm <laughs> but you, you mentioned a song that you are working on uh, at this very moment. So, uh, is is it significantly significantly different from from what we've heard from you? Yeah, it okay. is. It's really different. Um, it's 
kind of, oh, I really want to show you it, actually. <laughs> Let me just let me just like run down because I'm working on it. I'll just play it. I'll just play sure. like five, ten oh. seconds of it. Right. Uh, let me run down. It's kind of cool. It's so, like this one's really bouncy um, and kind of a Billie Eilish esque okay. thing. Uh, let me just show. I mean, you might not be able to hear it that well through the speakers, but, but here we go. So. I can hear it. Right. Yeah, that kind of thing. Right. So it's then, a more, it's, it feels a bit more like, well, I guess it's a bit like silence, a bit like begging on the EP, but but not so basically it's not ballad. It's not sad right. Billy playing a piano, you know. <laughs> Well, because uh, when I mentioned the themes as well, it, it, it's it's very much about I would say the same same things of kind of a rela relationship slowly falling apart, uh, not being sure where your head is at, where the other person's head is uh, at, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Uh, which is, was that kind of a snapshot of a specific moment in your life? Yeah, I mean, all of them, all of them were. Yeah, everything that I I try and write. Well, actually, thinking about it. Yes, for, for, for almost all of my life, every song I've ever written, I've tried to take from a snapshot of my life or something or someone mm. I know. Um, and yeah, that that is great. And I like the fact that it, they all have meaning. However, recently I'm trying to experiment with not actually worrying too much about whether it is about something specific or mm. dark or deep. I'm trying to focus more on like the the words and the sound and the feel of the song like you know with that demo i just i just showed you it, it's like the words are like getting my silver kamikaze you know and it's like that doesn't mean anything and i'm kind of thinking oh maybe it's maybe it's like a metaphor for my career and and how like sometimes it feels like a a bullet that's out of control you know and that's, and, but then i'm like but i'm just making it up it just sounds cool you know and i've got another new one on the album that's like su it's called sushi the sushi song and it's got all these interesting i think i'm getting really into actual just like cool interesting sounding words right and making that more and, and i know that might not be as deep but i've done the deep thing for so long and i'm just thinking and maybe i just i just want it to kind of like you know like all the other kids with the pumped up kicks and those kind of like interesting it just sounds cool you know? right and <laughs> what like, i hear right. often from artists is usually a lot because uh, when they uh, write lyrics, usually some months or years later, they kind of uh, read it back and then understand why they wrote it down uh, the way they yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, and to kind of make it full circle, then, but the song you just uh, kind of demonstrated, it, it sounded like you said it wasn't a ballad. It didn't sound sad. So is this kind of a reflection of where you are? Uh, now in terms of what we talked about in the beginning, being healthy, yeah. being uh, in a good mind space? I think it could be, yeah. I mean, it does make sense, I guess, that if you're if you're not that happy in your life, your songs end up being quite dark and miserable. And I guess when you are happier, they naturally become happier. But it's interesting because at the time when I was, when I was in that situation, I didn't actually realize how sad I was. Right. And it came out in the music but I just thought that was because I'm good at writing sad songs. But now I look back, I'm like, God, I was really like, uh, you know, we were, we were living in London and London's just hard. Well, it was, <laughs> it was, it was hard. It's just hard. And like every, you know, living in, paying a fortune for the most horrible flat in the middle of nowhere with no, with no yeah. mates, and, you know, tired all the time tubes get into places everyone's an asshole everything's <laughs> tricky you know like you know so you turn to drugs and you turn to the party side of things because it's an escape you know things weren't good with the label things weren't good with my relationship I wasn't you know the idea of going for a run was just madness why would I ever do that that's insane <laughs> um, and uh, and now yeah everything's it's weird this lockdown has been probably the best thing that ever happened to me it probably saved my life because mm -hmm. you know it, it was getting really bad I, you know just it's crazy how the drugs can be can go from being once a month to once a week to three times a week to every day so quickly that it can just 
it can just pass you by, you know. And when I say drugs, I mean, I mean, you know, the powders, you know, the hard stuff. It right. really, it, you know, I'm not talking weed or, you know, uh, any of that. You know, that's I think that's actually quite healthy, if I'm honest. Um, but, you know, the, the powders, they, they ruined my life. And, and they nearly, well, they nearly ruined my life. They nearly took everything away from me, you know. And I started to look around and go, like, okay, so I got dropped. My girlfriend's left me. My manager at the time, she she left. Um, and I could kind of just see my whole life sort of falling apart. But obviously, because you're on it, you're on the drugs, you're just like, no, no, everything's fine. I'm I'm amazing. You know, <laughs> everyone else doesn't <laughs> well, I mean, realize that. At the moment, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then, um, but then, yeah. All of a sudden, it, yeah, things really. I'm I'm so grateful. Yeah, everything's so much better now. Thank God. <laughs> but the, 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 I find it a very interesting story because the, that idea of reflections. Then, when did that start? Did, did it start like you say about nine months ago, where where everything kind of fell into place, yeah. where you started reflecting on your life and no, noticing or being able to recognize where uh, things were harming you? Totally, man. It's like. That was the time when I when I stopped taking the drugs and I and it started to clear my head a mm -hmm. lot and I started you know t using a lot of CBDs and oils and things I was kind of like you know oh my god this is I'm really starting to th think about who I've been and all the choices that I've made and I used to be very selfish and I used to just focus on what I wanted and and that was to be rich and famous how mm -hmm. do i become rich and famous i know i'll do music there's a shortcut what am i good enough that i can do and it was just awful and as a result i wasn't it wasn't working and and i didn't like who i was um and and yeah it, it was this time of like really now i'm really aware of of like trying to be a nice person and and trying to I don't know, just uh, as a result, my friendships with my, you know, my relationships better, my friendships are better. Like I've got a really good working relationship with my new management. And it's interesting because my new managers, they have no idea what I used to be. Right. You know, they, they have not, like, this, I, I'm a different person. I used to think I was so cool, you know? And, <laughs> and that's what this Reflections EP is about. It's like, that's why I chose that cover, you know, because you look at that cover and it, you almost think, what a dickhead. You know, it's <laughs> He's got a sheepskin coat on. He's got his chest out and he's sucking a lollipop. What's that? And then, <laughs> and then you kind of like, and, and that's great because it almost like boxes up. The, that to me is, it's kind of a very dark, sad place. And, the, you know, I like the cover is very dark and the songs are dark. And I almost like locks it in a box there. And now I've done it. And so with this album, I want it to be colourful and happy. And we're not, mm. not like happy, but like, I want it to be vibrant and not, you know, poor me. I hate my life. You know, yeah, well, more reflective of uh, reflective of the person you are now. In a, in a way, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. Maybe that's the thing. Reflect. It should be called like the current. Yeah, current or something. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, final qu yeah. final question then, because uh, like you said, you're you're uh, playing in May, which is uh, awesome. I hope I hope that all uh, works out. Um, what are your so you're working on a, an album? You have some shows coming up. How do you see uh, the future in terms of ambition then? Because you mentioned initially you just wanted to be rich and famous. How has that shifted yeah. now for you? Uh, well, the best thing is now that. Now that I've got a different mindset, I feel like I have everything I want. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting. I, I, for the first time, I mean, obviously you do have those ambitions. Well, it would be great to, it would be great for things to be, it's always easy to say, oh, one day I want to headline Wembley and put a song out and it goes straight to number one and don't have to do any promo. Um, but really, like, I've got it good. I... I I can call this my job and I can afford to just go to the center every day and make music I like and occasionally tour it to, you know, a few thousand people that uh, really support me. I've been there from the beginning and I just, obviously it'd be nice for it to get bigger, but I'm happy. And I, I, I don't need, I don't need it. I mean, my managers will probably hate hearing me say this, but I don't, think, I don't really mind if it doesn't get any bigger. I'm, I'm really, I'm in a good spot where I am, I think. Um, as long as it doesn't get any like smaller, as long as it doesn't go down, 
I just wanted to keep it, keep it rolling at this level. And, you know, that, that's all I can ask, really. I think that's great to hear. And I think that's a very healthy attitude to have uh, within this music industry because it's, it, it can get kind of out of hand at some point. Oh God, yeah! So many so. times, so many times, you just forget. You know, back back in my old mind, it would always be comparing myself to other people and go, "Oh, I want to." You always want that next thing, and and I've mm. done loads of things. I always wanted to like sell out Shepherd's Bush Empire, and we did it. And our O2 Arena with VLO and Radio One and James Corden show. We did loads of good stuff. Sure, and it's like. It was fun and it's cool, but at, but at the time when it happened, I was like, "Yeah, that's good." But what's next? And it's not just I'm just trying to enjoy the things that happen now. You know, I <laughs> no, I think I think that's great. That's 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 the way it should be. Either uh, in my opinion, at least. Um, yeah. Billy, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Thanks, man. Thank you.